I'm Selena, and I am here representing Pisces Ministry, um, one of the uh, ministry, one of the 12 ministries in the temple is Pisces, and we are responsible for um, public Sabbaths and ritual and um, public esbets as well, but we're also responsible for divination in the temple. So each month we do um, divination work for the temple as a whole, just to see, get a feel for where we're at, where we're going, if anything's coming up that we need to be aware of. Um, and that is my job in the temple. So I wanted to spend this month um, while we're in, while the sun's in Pisces, talking a little bit about divination and why we do that and some different forms of divination. So throughout this month, you will see me um, every week um, talking a bit about divination. You will also see our other Pisces deputies, Dawn and Liz, and you'll also see our lovely Pisces lead minister, Matuka, will make an appearance as well. Um, so what is divination? Why do we do it? So divination um, is usually thought of as foretelling, of uh, telling the future, telling the past, getting insight into um, whatever the, uh, the situation is. And there are so many different methods of divination out there, like literally hundreds. So we're not going to talk about all of them. We're going to just talk about a few because we only have a month. Um, so why do we do this? Why do we want to, um, why do we want to work with divination? So for the witch, this is part of the communication with the universe. You know, we do our spell work and that's our way of speaking our will into the universe. That's our way of saying, this is what I want. This is what I want to manifest. This is what I want to heal. These are the changes that I want to make in the universe. So that's part of our spell work. But the other side of that communication is receiving, is, is listening to what the spirits, the gods, the ancestors, the universe has to say back to us. And um, sometimes people lean a little hard one way or the other. They do a lot of spell work, but they don't do the listening part. So that's not really a communication with the universe. That's just speaking into the universe only. And then some people only want to do divination and they don't want to put their own will out into the universe. So that's that's another one sided conversation. Um, so we would have a balance of both of these. Um, but when you're communicating, when you're doing your divination work, you are connecting directly with spirit. So it's important to know who you're talking to when you're doing any kind of divination work. Are you speaking to your guides or a particular guide that you work with? Are you speaking to the ancestors or a particular ancestor that you work with? Are you speaking to a deity? Are you speaking to um, the divine mind? Are you speaking to your higher self? It's important when you go into any kind of divination work to know who am I communicating with? Who am I listening to? You know, um, and different Different forms of divination are better for connecting with different types of spirits as well. Um, and, and you'll, and it may be different for the individual. So you may connect with a certain uh, type of divination more than others. And that's fine because there are literally hundreds of ways that the universe is communicating with us and that we can receive that information. Um, divination work can also give you a shift in perspective, you know, you're uh, accustomed to viewing the world either from your own personal view or from a human view. So when you do divination work, you know, you may be getting insight um, from a planetary being, you know, that's going to have a very different way of perceiving the universe than a human, you know, or an ancestor. And since they've passed, they're going to have a different uh, perception than someone who's living. So um, that's a really good reason for doing divination work is to have that shift in perspective and to gain insight into the perspective of others, essentially. Um, and you can also gain a lot of knowledge that way. It expands your own consciousness when you um, interact with different types of beings, different types of consciousness. Um, generally speaking, there are two uh, types or two categories that divination can fit into. Um, one is a fixed system and one is a fluid system. So a fluid divination system 
is really open to interpretation. And it's going to be things like scrying, where you're looking for images in um, either in a bowl of water or in a stone or some reflective surface, or even like cloud gazing. That's that's a form of scrying. You know, you're looking at the sky and you're seeing what images emerge, you know, and then you can then interpret what the meaning may be for you based on the images that appear. So those are fluid systems, oracle decks, um, omens, different things like that are more of a, well, omens can be, can be fixed or fluid, but um, those are, those are the ways that a fluid system works. You, usually there's some sort of gazing um, and you, images appear through the gazing and no one else may see the same images as you and you interpret meaning from that. And then fixed systems usually have a particular set of meanings. That would be your tarot cards, um, a lot of your rune systems, um, a lot of your throwing systems that involve symbols. The symbols have a particular meaning and sometimes they can have depth of meaning. So there can be layers of understanding that you can get from that, but they tend to have a, a fixed meaning or a fixed way of using the system. So those are great because it's a little harder for you to um, just project your own interpretation of what you want to see onto the divination system because it's going to have meaning already just in, its, in, in the way it's set up. Um, so whatever system you use, it's important to make sure that you're not one-sided or the other. Like if you're doing all your divination and everything is always beautiful and abundant and you're on the right path and everything's perfect, that's awesome. And I hope that's really true for your life. Um, but that is not the human experience. That's not the experience of creation. So there has to be creative aspects. There has to be destructive aspects. Um, or you may not get a warning that you need if your system doesn't even incorporate anything that um, could be discordant or difficult. Um, so that's the two main types. And this month we're gonna be talking about all different kinds of, of specific systems. We're gonna be talking about cardamancy, that's working with cards and symbols. Um, we're gonna talk a little bit, I don't know if we're gonna talk about scrying, but I'll talk about scrying now. Um, so scrying is essentially, it's a gazing. You can use um, like a bowl of water, and uh, let some light reflect off the surface of that water, either a candle or moonlight is great, and see what images come through um, and, and follow the, the path of those images and what the meaning is for you. Um, other forms of scrying, you can use stones, crystal balls, just a crystal, just any kind of crystal that has a reflection to it, you can scry. You can scry into the facets of it. Um, really anything, like I can scry into the corner of the room if I just soften my focus. Uh, but usually you want something that has some kind of texture to it um, or movement with like water, things like that. Um, you can also use wax, like melting wax is a form of divination. And a lot of people do that with their spell candles. So you can just watch how the how the wax melts in your spell and um, get a little bit of more information about how that spell is gonna, gonna end up as, as you're watching the wax melting or the flame. You can watch the flame of the candle as well. Um, let's see, there's, there's tea leaf reading. My, my grandmother read coffee grounds. Um, and it's the same thing. You're just looking for symbols in the dregs of the tea or the coffee. Um, there's dowsing. We, we do a fair bit of dowsing in, in later levels in the temple. Um, there's, uh, there's all sorts of throwing systems as well. And we're going to talk about a few of those this month. Um, but there's bone throwing where you essentially have all sorts of different pieces that have meaning and you throw them out on a cloth or a tray or whatever. And the tray itself may have um, divisions that have certain meanings or the cloth may have imagery on it that has certain meanings depending on where the pieces land and which pieces land face up and which pieces land close to each other, that sort of thing. Um, rune casting, we're gonna talk a little bit of that later this month. Um, there's a bean casting, it's called favomancy, which I just love um, where you're using different types of beans and they have different colors and different meanings. 
Um, we're going to talk about the OM a little bit. That's a throwing system as well, or can be. Um, we're going to talk about all sorts of stuff this month. So I think that's everything I have to share right now about divination. But um, this is part of the work of Pisces Ministry. And uh, there are some several classes out there. I know there's a, an OM class. I know Christopher has a tarot class, but there's also a, a tarot class that uh, Chris Drew is offering this year. I don't know if, if it's still available to sign up, but if it is, I highly encourage you to take that class. Um, yeah, so thank you for listening and Pisces Ministry will be back with more as the month continues. Have a good day.